Good story. Thank you. Thank you. So, conscious of time, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep it um, as brief to the point as possible. So, the Australian Volunteers for International Development Program uh, is currently funded by Ausaid. We're probably going to change all those logos next month. We'll see how we go. Mm -hmm. um, and Australian International is a, I'll go through it in a moment, but we're, we're in that space of sending the volunteers on behalf of the government. Uh, just to link into what Mark was saying, these pictures are from Fiji. Uh, and this is a traditional cricket that uh, he was just referring to. So, so who is Australian International? So we're, a, we're established in 1991 and we're wholly owned by the South Australian Government uh, with a head office in Adelaide. We have offshore operations in 28 countries um, across seven different geographic regions. Uh, previously we were Asia Pacific focus, but with the uh, expansion of AusAid Years back into Africa and Latin America, Caribbean, we expanded there. Uh, we work with 600 or more than 600 partner organisations, including contractors, universities, and host organisations. And our involvement with volunteer programs began in 2000 when we took over the Australian Youth Ambassador Program, which a lot of people in this room would know that name. And to date, we've mobilised over 4,000 volunteers across Aussie programs. programs. Uh, the first one being the Australian Youth Ambassadors for Development Program, which is for volunteers aged 18 to 30, 3 to 12 month assignments with 1 to 3 years experience. Uh, and just to sort of quantify that, 18 to 23 year olds, there's very few of those. It's generally in that 23 to 27 year old age bracket that the, the volunteers come from. Most have university uh, qualifications or some kind of post-secondary qualifications, and they do have those couple of years experience. The idea there is, is uh, most assignments are generally 12 months, and it's enthusiasm of the volunteers coming over there to, to get a two-way exchange. Uh, and that's about 400 volunteers per year get mobilised by that program. Then there's the uh, Australian Business Volunteers, which is very much short-term. Uh, the demographic there is in that 40, 50 plus age group, uh, generally around the two month mark is the assignments. They're very short term, very targeted, more like a traditional uh, consultancy. Uh, they'll come in really to sort of fill a specific gap. Um, a lot of those are around strategic planning, organisational development and those sorts of things. And then the Australian Volunteer for International Development Program, we manage in partnership with ABI uh, and Red Cross. Their uh, 18 plus is no age limit. I think our oldest to date is 86, got mobilised. Um, one to 36 month assignments, they're generally around an 18 month mark is the duration. And you three plus years experience is, is the benchmark we give. Uh, they're very popular, they, uh, the average age probably in the mid to late 30s. Uh, Organisations love them because they get longer than 12 months, and 12 months you can't really achieve much, so they get that two year bracket. Um, and we will mobilise about 130 of those per year. So, sports and volunteering. To date, we've had 157 uh, youth ambassadors in sports, 25 habits, and 82% of our uh, volunteer assignments are attached to partner organisations. Um, currently, we have 18 uh, assignments offshore in sports. Uh, the Australian Sports Commission over the years, we've had 20 uh, assignments with them as a partner organisation. Um, there are significant benefits for APOs, as we call them, in partnering with the volunteer programs and helping on their assignments. I mean, in Martin's own team, a significant percentage of his staff are ex-volunteers who have come through the program and now gone on to work. Um, my personal opinion is I don't think it's, it's, it's enough. Uh, it's only a very small percentage of the overall number, but we're slowly increasing it over time. So where do they go? bulk of these are in the Pacific, uh, and that has been heavily driven um, through initiatives like what's going on with the Australian Sports Commission, their activities and sports development. Um, so Fiji, Vanuatu, Tongu, Tonga, Samoa. Uh, to a lesser extent, Indonesia. Um, little old Laos, which Chris talked about this morning, is in there with a percentage. Um, and then you can see a couple over there in Latin America, Caribbean. Um, the bulk of it is over in the Pacific. 
what sports? AFL and cricket dominate the pie here. Sports on the left hand side there is everything else that didn't really fit into any other category and it's more general sports coaching, sports admin, uh, some sports teaching and, and those sorts of activities. Um, surf life saving is, is a big one that's taking off. Uh, water safety and swimming, um, drowning prevention is a, is a big issue, especially in Southeast Asia and South Asia. Um, in Bali, we have someone working with uh, Bali Vista, the Surf Life Saving Association there. Um, and, and politicians love because every time they go to Bali, they get to go to the surf club, so I'm sure Tony Abbott will be down there sooner or later. Um, but it's, a, it's, quite a, it's quite a broad cross section. Um, and then lastly, the types of hosts. So we've had some discussion about you know, whether they should be with the national federations or um, and how does those interactions work. And, and Two thirds of our assignments are with sports associations. So we do try and link with the peak body in the country um, to try and develop them, and hopefully that development will um, trickle down to the clubs and the, and the different organisations under them. Uh, Olympic committees, government to a, to a lesser extent, uh, schools and the private sector. So three key countries that we're talking about um, through this conference: Laos, Solomon Islands, and Timor. So just to give some examples. From those countries, uh, the Laos National Sports Committee. We've had a, a sports coach trainer uh, with the Rugby Union of the Lao PDR. I'll explain the difference between that and the LRA in a second. Um, as, as a rugby development officer, the Solomon Islands. We've had uh, volunteers with the, the Church of Melanesia as a school sport development officer. Uh, Solomon Islands Basketball Federation as a basketball development officer, and then Timor. With, oh, I'm going to give this a crack. It's the Federación de Tennis de Timor Leste, uh, a sports program development officer. So that's just some examples from the country we're focusing on. Um, they, they come in all shapes and forms, but uh, they, and they go to a lot of different countries. So my volunteer experience, this is why they get me up here to talk. Uh, I've been with us training about six and a half years, um, two minutes, and this is going to be the short version. Uh, I went to Lao, so I was the Lao. Um, Rugby Development Officer back in 2004 to 2006. I'll switch to the next photo. Um, and at that time, we, we just formed the Lao Rugby Union.